welcome to our vlog for February 2022. And before we get started, you know, we've been doing a lot of videos lately and many of you have probably been wondering, gosh, that sure doesn't look like the fly shop. So I thought we'd give you a studio tour. This is what we've been working on now for quite some bit to get all set up. And now it's dialed in and we're rocking and rolling with this thing. Since the shop's open nine to seven daily and we've kind of kept those kind of summertime hours, it's really hard to film during uh, open hours or before or after. And so I'm super excited to have a dedicated space for editing, for filming. Uh, we're gonna be doing podcasts in here too once we get those back up and rolling again. Pretty simple little setup here. Have some lights, got a new cool fancy table super comfortable couch that I never sit in. I put some of my cool saltwater reels over here since I never use them. <laughs> my trips all keep getting canceled. Oh man, I just found out that my Christmas Island trip is now being canceled for the third year in a row. Super bummed about that. Got to represent with my passion for permit because I definitely have a permit addiction. Got a bottle of Woodford Reserve here and this was given to me by a wonderful guest. And I don't know if Woodford is my favorite bourbon because I haven't tried everything that's out there, but it's definitely, it's up there for sure. Maybe you think that there's a bourbon better than Woodford Reserve. Prove it. One of my favorite aspects of our new space is Mark Dalton's artwork on display. I love his stuff. This stuff's great. Check out the link in the description below for more of Mark's work. Recently, we had a spade demo day and a bunch of us rounded up over at the ponds in Gig Harbor by the Little League Fields to do some casting. A lot of people showed up that were brand new to spade casting, so we gave a couple quick pointers for them. Great opportunity to try out some different rods. We had some experienced casters too, some beautiful casters, like check out Glenn's cast right here. Man, tight loops, love it. Uh, for those of you that want to learn how to spade cast, we have a spade casting class coming up on the books and it's March 6th. It's only 75 bucks, it's only limited to four people. If we fill the morning spot, we'll probably open one up in the afternoon as well. Uh, but it's a two and a half hour class that really goes over a lot of the foundational stuff for spay casting. So I encourage you to sign up for that. Speaking of education, we have a beach clinic coming up as well, as well as a lake clinic. I love teaching the beach clinic. I wanna help you crack the code on Puget Sound. We go over a lot of different stuff in the class, tides, what fish eat, effective flies, conditions, seasons, but I really wanna help you be a better caster, make better presentations. Uh, and so our class is two and a half hours in the shop with a presentation. We talk through a bunch of stuff to put all those pieces together. And then we go to a beach, we go fish, we put everything we learned into play. So the beach clinic's coming up April 22nd. Still have a couple spots open. Check that out, make sure you sign up. Aaron O'Brien does our lake clinic and does an exceptional job with that clinic. Highly recommend signing up for that class. We have it coming up in just a few weeks. We'll be doing a lot more of those this spring. But if you wanna get dialed into lake fishing, which I highly suggest you check out, especially if you're a newer angler, we have a lot of opportunities around us in Gig Harbor. That's a clinic you're gonna to wanna to sign up for. There's a lot to look forward to to fishing in March. Not only do we have the East Side Lakes opening up uh, at the beginning of the month, but then there's also squalas and March, March browns on the Yakima and springtime can be a really cool time to be out there. I know some people are still steelhead fishing in March as well, but for me, I'm heading to Mexico at the end of March, super stoked to fly down to Cancun and drive up to Isla Hobosh, the island of Hobosh where Sandflea lives. And Sandflea's crew is gonna be guiding our group uh, for some baby tarpon. There's some big tarpon there too. Um, but if you're interested in joining us, uh, it's an easy flight down on Alaska Airlines. The fishing's great. Uh, they've had a great season so far fishing for juvenile tarpon. And I would love for you to join me and there's information on our website about that trip. We're a few weeks away from our hosting of the film tour. We've been doing this for a dozen years. This is a 21 and older event. Georgetown Brewery is coming through with some beer. So at six o'clock, the doors open for a silent auction supporting the Wild Steelhead Coalition. The show starts at seven o'clock. You definitely wanna be there. It, this is a fun time. I don't know if you subscribe to our channel, but we've been putting out all sorts of videos recently. We had a video that gave an overview of Renzetti Vices. We did a video on the Hobie four-person pedal drive Fiesta, and also did a video on the six must-have trout flies. Have some more videos coming up that we've already recorded, and we are editing those down and getting ready to post those. We got some exciting stuff coming up with some fly tying videos, more kayak videos, must-have sea run cutthroat fly videos, all sorts of different stuff. And if have you ever wondered if it's cheaper to tie your own flies or to buy your own flies? Well, we have a video talking about that coming up as well. 
We love to hear from you and we actually solicited questions in the community tab on YouTube as well as in our email and on social media and asked what are questions that you would like to hear answered about fly fishing and so we have two questions that came in that we're going to answer for this vlog and then we'll have more answers for other questions coming up in the future but the first question is saltwater fly care after a day of fishing how do I make my hooks last longer? This is a great question because sometimes I see anglers boxes like in my beach clinic and I'll, I'll see them put a fly back in their box. And this can be a problem because a lot of fly boxes, one, have a seal around them to seal out any water. Well, that seal also seals in any moisture. If you put a wet fly that has just been in the salt in your fly box with your other flies, that salt water is gonna get locked in your box. So what I do is after I'm fishing with my salt water flies, I cut, when I cut the fly off, I throw the fly in my bag or it gets stuck in the kayak somewhere. When I get home, I rinse those flies with fresh water. I throw them on a little paper towel to dry. Once they're dry, then they go back in the box, but I don't fish a fly and stick it in the box. I always dry those flies. I've gotten in such the habit of doing that. When I freshwater trout fish, I kind of do that too. I'll take my flies, after I've used them, I kind of put them on a little foam patch on my bag or on my cooler, and I don't put them back in my fly boxes. I wait until I'm done fishing when those flies I know are dried out and then put them back in my box. So I hope that helps, and I hope that helps your flies last a little bit longer when you're out fishing the salt. The second question that came in was posted in our YouTube comments on our on last month's vlog, but I thought it was a great question. And the question was, when you're fishing chronomids, how close are those trout to the bottom and how do you set your flies? And the fish are actually pretty close to the bottom. I like to set my flies at least six inches from the bottom, maybe up to 18 inches, but I don't want them halfway in the water column. I want them closer to the bottom so they're just hovering above that weed growth. Well, so how do you know how deep the water is? This is what I do. I take my Dr. Slick scissor clamps and they have this little ratchet on here. So they lock in place. And what I do is once I I'm set up with my flies and my little split shot, if I'm using that, I hook this onto the bottom fly of my setup. Now my indicator is not set yet. It might just be sliding or I don't even have it yet looped on. I then just take this with the fly and I just throw it overboard, throw it in the water and it sinks down to the bottom. And I know when it hits the bottom cause it's pretty heavy and then I can grab the line where it meets the water. And then now I know the depth of the water to my bottom fly. Then I'll take the indicator and I will position the indicator on the line 6 to 18 inches so that those flies are just right over the bottom. I hope that helps you figuring out how deep the, the water is for chronomid fishing. I guess this could even be helpful too if you're gonna be fishing a sinking line and you wanna just know how deep it is. You could try that trick by throwing it down there, being able to see the depth and then being able to take it off and throw you know, the leech pattern or whatever you're fishing. But it is really important to have your fly in the zone. Sometimes having your fly in the zone is more important than what the actual fly pattern you're using is. Hey, if you found these tips helpful, give this video a like so that we know. And we'd love to hear from you. If you have a question, I'm sure other anglers are asking the same or similar questions. We have a link in the description below that takes you to a really simple Google form that just has one spot for you to fill in a question. Ask us a question, let us help you out on your fly fishing journey. We love to help anglers out be more successful on the water. Thanks a ton guys, we really appreciate you and we'll see you in the next video.